According to modern scientists, the majority of galaxies, including our own Milky Way, contain supermassive black holes. These black holes are supermassive because they have millions and sometimes even billions of times the mass of the Sun. At this point, you might ask, how do you even measure a black hole all the way out there? And if you can quantify something with billions of suns inside, what would be the largest black hole in the entire universe? Well, stick around to find out in this video. But first, let's talk a little bit about black holes and their masses. The mass of a black hole is far greater than the stellar mass black holes, which in turn are about 150 times bigger than the mass of the sun. Beyond that point, there's a group of intermediate mass black holes, sometimes known as Goldilocks black holes, whose existence has just recently been proven and whose upper mass limit hasn't even been established yet. Now, back to the largest black hole in the universe. Housing over 66 billion solar masses, the Ton 618 is the most massive black hole we've discovered so far. The Ton 618 is truly a monster, especially when compared to the RGG 118, the dwarf galaxy about 340 million light years away. The RGG 118 has the lightest supermassive black hole ever seen, with a mass of about 50,000 times more than the Sun. The mass of a supermassive black hole is usually millions of times more than our Sun, so that's not really unusual. For instance, the one in the middle of our own Milky Way has 4.6 million solar masses, but considering that black holes are black, how can we even know if they exist? What reveals their existence at the center of the galaxy? Well, black holes don't produce any light that can be seen through the naked eye, making them practically invisible from distance. Black holes could produce large amounts of light outside the visible spectrum though, which are usually radio, x-ray, or gamma radiation. Even though they don't generate visible light themselves and are undetectable through all the billion dollar telescopes we have floating in space, like the Hubble and JWST. Nonetheless, the matter around the black hole, not the black hole itself, can in fact be detected through their electromagnetic radiation. The accretion disks spin whirlpools of gas and dust, holding most of the supermassive black holes that are found at the cosmic cores of galaxies. The black hole's gravity accelerates particles in these disks to travel around it at a huge fraction of the speed of light. As these particles continually hit one another, they heat up until they finally reach temperatures of millions of degrees. In the process, they produce an insane amount of X-rays. These rays can be seen over extremely long distances by astronomers who use X-ray telescopes such as NASA's Chandra Observatory in space. But accretion disks might not surround all supermassive black holes at one time. Some are what's known as quiescent. This means they may or may not have accretion disks and have eaten up all of the gas and dust that was floating around their gravitational range. Pretty wild if you think about it. So you see, there's really no way to find any radiation around them to detect them since we can't even see them. What actually happens is, as a gas or dust cloud gets dangerously close, it gets heated up and produces x-rays before being swallowed by the black hole. Some of them might occasionally release short flares. Other times, bright flares from black holes have been detected as they devour entire stars. A good example of this is the Sagittarius A, supermassive black hole also known as SAG-A. It's a dormant supermassive black hole located 26,000 light years away in the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Even though it flares erratically in different types of wave bands, ranging from radio to gamma, the near-infrared is where it's most noticeable. The flare production process still isn't fully understood, but it could be a representation of the black hole eating up gas and dust, or it could just be something else. We still know very little about these flares, and it's super hard to study them from a distance. But still, in comparison to faraway galaxies, our galaxy's core is pretty close, which helps scientists study the stars there and observe the motion and speed of stars. A hundred or so stars are in orbit around SAG-A in the Milky Way's core because of its gravitational pull. Astronomers have patiently tracked the movements of around a dozen of the stars closest to the black hole since 1995 and have animated their trajectories using the data they very obviously orbit around some hidden object. Astronomers have estimated the mass of the object they circled from their paths and velocities and have come up with a number of 4.6 million times the mass of the Sun. We don't know how, but we're pretty sure it has involved some mathematical equations, so we won't bother to get into that. But what we do know is that there's a gigantic, invisible object at the center of our galaxy that's slingshotting nearby stars to extremely high speeds. 
At its closest approach, S2, the star orbiting SAG A, the closest, accelerates to 11 million miles per hour. Its year, or the length of time it takes to complete one circle of Sagittarius A, is 15 Earth years. Its orbit brings it within 120 times the distance between the Sun and Earth from the black hole. These investigations into the galactic core have shown that the Milky Way's monster in the dark is located there. The predictions of Einstein's theory of relativity, as they apply to things circling black holes, have been supported by all the studies of the stars around Sag A, and meticulously tracing the galactic core over decades. There's no doubt that supermassive black holes exist in a bunch of dimensions and masses. The diameter of Sag A is estimated to be 14 million miles. Ton 618 is estimated to be 262 billion miles large and to weigh 66 billion solar masses. That's more than 43 times the diameter of the entire solar system. But where do supermassive black holes come from? And how do they manage to gather such mind-boggling quantities of mass? This is when things start to get a bit tricky. The origin of supermassive black holes is another thing we know very little about, just like Doctor Strange, who doesn't know much about the multiverse. It's still up for debate whether they all form in the same way, or if there are multiple ways for black holes to form. What we can be certain of is that these black holes came into being billions of years after the Big Bang, during the time of the very early cosmos when planets started forming. It's still unclear how they managed to grow to be so huge so soon. These giants could have developed by a marriage of two black holes with less mass, ultimately creating a gigantic black hole, but we don't know for sure yet. Another theory suggests that they came from the collapse of enormous hydrogen clouds. Anything in the cosmos that's compressed to a specific size and density would turn into a black hole. For instance, the Earth would become one as well if it were compressed to the size of a marble. But the truth is that we're unsure of which theory, if any, is accurate. There's also the matter of why the majority of galaxies have a supermassive black hole. What connection does a galaxy have to its black hole? This topic has been the focus of several scientific studies in recent years. So, do supermassive black holes form first and the galaxy surrounding it form around it? Or do the supermassive black holes form after the galaxy forms around it? By no means is the chicken and egg dilemma solved. A supermassive black hole's mass and the mass of the gigantic bulge that surrounds it have an odd linear connection in which the bigger the black hole, the more matter there is in the bulge. This suggests some form of co-evolution between the two, but we're unsure of the nature of this link and what it means. A supermassive black hole could have a significant impact on the star formation inside a galaxy, a fact that has just recently come to light. Star-forming hydrogen clouds are either scattered by relativistic jets emerging from a supermassive black hole, preventing star formation, or compressed, allowing star formation to begin. This suggests a strong connection between the growth of a supermassive black hole's host galaxy and the black hole itself, but we are only just starting to comprehend the nature of this connection and what it implies for star formation. With some degree of certainty, we can now state that all galaxies are formed of supermassive black holes, even though a few may lose them. Whichever developed first, the galaxy or the black hole, is still up for debate. The ultimate monsters of the cosmos, supermassive black holes have mysterious origins and aren't fully understood in terms of their interactions with host galaxies. But it's likely that we will finally be able to solve these secrets once a brand new generation of extremely powerful Earth and space-based telescopes come online within the next 10 years. A supermassive black hole could be detected by bursts of X-ray radiation in distant galaxies, but in a legal context, this would only be considered circumstantial evidence. Even though scientists were certain the black holes existed, they had never actually observed one. After the Event Horizon Telescope, a network of radio telescopes came online in 2019 spanning the globe. This accomplished an amazing technical achievement by being able to capture a picture of a supermassive black hole in the center of galaxy M87. The image, which was released to the public in March 2019 and made front page news all across the world, was the first genuine sighting of a black hole. It was one of the most famous scientific images ever created and validated many of Einstein's predictions. It displayed the blazing disk of material that surrounds the black hole's shadow, which is dark and devoid of photons because any of them that approach the supermassive black hole too closely are instantly devoured. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed watching our content, please leave a like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content just like this.